Welcome to ACC Network Basketball. It is presented by Ally. Coming to you this afternoon from historic Carmichael Arena on the campus of the University of North Carolina where the Tar Heels welcome in the Eagles of Boston College. This is a Boston College team who lost over 70% of their offense. So a young ball club that's really learning how to go through the rigors of ACC play. And Duke is just a different animal on the defensive end of the floor. So really focused offensively this week in practice, was, was happy with her team's response. Right, Boston College losing players like Taylor Soul and Cameron Swartz, both of them all conference performers who moved on elsewhere in the ACC. Swartz at Georgia Tech, Soul at Virginia Tech. And it is a play for game, play for K game here in Chapel Hill. So North Carolina with their uniforms trimmed in pink. Boston College going with the all pink. North Carolina with three players making their first career starts in Zelaya McPherson and Key. Deja Kelly. This is the concentration. Coach Mack doesn't want her to get a lot of shots. Took the first one and missed it. The Boston College lineup, a couple of freshmen in there. Diana Mayer, number 20, is their very talented freshman point guard that Coach Mack says is an extension of herself on the floor. And as a former point guard, you know that is very important. Yeah, it's really important. Understanding what it is that, that Coach Mack wants out of this offense, how to push the tempo, decision making. And that's a good first defensive sequence for North Carolina that you're solid in your rotations. They're gonna have to mix things up probably more often uh, than Coach Banghart is comfortable with between man and zone to conserve and to stay out of foul trouble. That's right, very short bench for Boston College dealing with not having Dontavia Wagner, their leading scorer and rebounder, who is out, stress reaction in her leg. And they are hopeful to get her back. That shot is nailed by JoJo Lacey. And that's what JoJo Lacey does. She stretches the floor. She's a secondary ball handler for this ball club, but they need her to be a shot maker consistently. Over half of the shots she's taken have been from three, and here's a good answer. Kennedy Todd Williams, who started every game the last couple of years. And Kennedy Todd Williams is a player who consistently knocking it down now. Exactly what they wanted, Gokton getting a shot. The follow sends Van Timmeren to the line. And, and that's going to be a, a, a challenge, a discipline challenge. And there's an offensive rebound. Got to be smart right there. It's very, very important for these two to stay on the floor. Now Van Timmeren, who is only a 61% free throw shooter on the season, missed them both. Good play by Gokton. Carolina was down. They had to come back down in that big. ball game. They were down big. Down 15, in fact, nice. in the fourth quarter. Mayer called for her first foul. And another player that can't afford to, to get in foul trouble, really the only point guard on this Boston College ball club. Tyena Mayer needs to stay on the floor. Uh, Tyena Mayer, a kid from Dorchester. No seniors, no grad transfers on this team at all. So everyone will come back, can come back next year for BC. Left open Van Timmer, and that's a good find by Lacey. And this is the Carolina team with Usby and Hodgson and Poole that's very experienced playing together. Now you've got some new pieces on the floor as McPherson knocks down a pull-up. That shot missed outside by Lacey, who is their best three-point shooter. And now left open for three on the other end and fouled a chance for a four-point play for McPherson. Kayla McPherson, she is fearless. Like, this is a player who, coming out of high school, was a highly touted, explosive offensive threat, had been saddled with injuries. Hurt her knee in high school and redshirted all of last year in what should have been her true freshman season. But yeah, just a lot of talent as she is her working her way into the lineup. She's an explosive, flashy, fun player to watch. And I asked Coach Banghart if she has found her rhythm, her timing, because she has missed a lot of basketball, and she said absolutely. Ellie Van Timmeren called for the offensive foul for North Carolina. Took them to a Sweet 16 last year for the first time since 2015, where they lost to South Carolina. No shame there. And Deja Kelly. A little bit too strong, rebound. Taken down by Daly. 
Carolina very cognizant of having to get back and stop their transition. Another turnover, and there she is, McPherson in the open court. And if she gets open like that, it's over. It sure is. Quick hands on defense. Does a great job of getting the deflection that leads to a steal. Carolina led the half of that game. Another shot off the mark. And here comes Todd Williams, known as Toddy, to her teammates and head coach. McPherson. Boy, what a difference she's making. And she is instant offense, instant energy. And a natural vocal leader. A lot of young players aren't naturally vocal leaders. And you could see even a year ago her on the bench talking to her teammates. Hadn't played a game here. Kelly's first points. And, and you got to like that, right? I mean, somebody being engaged, especially a true freshman. Another shot from the outside, and it falls in. The drought finally is over. Daly knocks it down. Johnny Key posting up hard. They can't get her the ball. And Alyssa Usby probably would have held that cut. Alyssa Usby, Hodgson, Poole all out. Good job again by Adams. Her concern is Usby playing because she said if Usby, I mean, it changes your whole game plan. It does. It does. I mean, Usby just does so many things for this ball club. You can't just focus on her scoring ability. It's her rebounding, her defense, her energy, her ball movement. Look at, look at, look at her. <laughs> Telling everybody what's what out there on the floor. That's Hodgson, great. yes, but averaging over two threes a game. Double figure scorer who came over after starting things out at William and Mary. Quarter winding down and a good finish of that quarter. Kayla McPherson has been terrific in this ball game. 10 points in the first quarter. And I'll tell you, just the energy that she brings to start this, this game was huge for this ball club. Knocking down shots, getting it done on the defensive end of the floor, pushing tempo, communicating to her teammates. She has been hot from the start, and she is a difference maker for this Tar Heel ball club. Redshirt freshman making her first career start and is outscoring Boston College all by herself. Pam Ward and Stephanie White joining you from Chapel Hill. Four for five from the floor and DC is a team three for 12. It's incredible. The defense out on the perimeter. Gokdang working down low, couldn't get it to go. I, I think you have to give Gokdang a, a touch now every time down the floor. Tiani Key is a different defender than Zelaya inside, so she can get deeper position. And there we see Gokdang with the block transition, and we have a player down, it's Ava McGee, the freshman from Washington, D.C. Gokdang were the only two who really played well against Duke the other day. On with your screen and just ran in to Todd Williams. Daly on the other end. Miami, Florida. Got one out of two. Now McPherson, so fast. Brings it up, lays it off. The three-pointer no good by Paulina Paris, who is the only newcomer on this North Carolina team. Everybody back, and she's the true freshman. Kelly bottled up by Van Timmeren. Paris again, but a whistle. Three appears to have counted. Then there was a foul away from the ball. On Lacey, which is her third. Lacey averaging 11 points per game. So she comes out. Gokdang, after a short rest, comes back in. Well, there was a switch defensively, so Lacey was on key inside and really just trying to work to get defensive position. Fortunate for Carolina, they were able to get the score too, taking advantage of it with the five-point play. That's right, the basket counted, and then they got the inbounds into McPherson, who's got 12, half of their points. And another takeaway, it's the fifth steal, a new career high for Adams. 
Oh my. Kayla McPherson's feeling it. She's fun to watch. She is so fun to watch. I mean, just a player who has a great understanding, who you can tell just loves to play the game. Finally, a shot falls from the outside. That's Tiana Todd, a freshman from Toronto, the uh, Toronto area, Vaughan, Ontario. And that's where BC is going to have to get looks in transition. Ben Courtney Banhart brought, brought up a really good point about, you know, not everybody has the entire playbook. Right, your starting group typically does, but not everybody else. So they've got to really simplify what they do. That is her second, so the foul's really piling up now for BC. That's the problem. Here's Destiny Adams. And Clemson trying to get inside the bubble, score off against Louisville in the second game. The stretch run coming down in both the ACC men's and women's side. Check that out on Saturday on the network and also on the ESP and app. This is the Third to the last weekend of the regular season for the women. Hard to believe. And boy, is there a log jam to try to get into the top four and get the double by for the tournament. In and out on the shot by Mayer. But the possession kept alive momentarily. Boston College missing their leading scorer, leading rebounder, and Dontavia Wagner, who also leads the ACC in steals. So a player who, as McPherson, continues to stay hot. A player in Wagner who is a difference maker on both ends for this ball club. Screen left for you is Kayla Ivey. They miss her too. She tore her ACL in the summer. She was the starting point guard last year and would have been so key. Mayer's a really good point guard, but a freshman point guard to have Ivy there with her. Yeah, no, no question. Not, not just for mentorship and, and leadership, but to give her a blow every once in a while. I mean, it's a long season for a freshman in this league. This is a tough league. And that's a thing, right? I mean, because you look at some of, I saw one of the players, physical and mental, right? Yeah, physical and mental, and, and you take into account, you know, that, that they're, going to school with Boston College, right? So academically, what the load is, it, you, you, your practices are longer. Bok Dang, finally. Averaging 11 points per game behind only Wagner, who's out with the injury. Kelly slices on the baseline. Collision, no call. Here's Mayer, the freshman point guard. Able to recover and score her first points, averaging 11 points per game. Freshman from Boston. Double-double against NC State. Kelly. Now with seven on the afternoon. She just does such a good job of getting to her spots on the floor. Has a great understanding of where those spots are and how to get there. ACC tournament seating, you don't want to have to play on that first day. So, you know, working your way in position to, to not have to put yourself on that Wednesday ball game is important for everybody else. It's really tough to win those games in the ACC tournament. We throw off the mark for Todd Williams. Coming out of 14 points. And the loss to Syracuse. And I think she's still just scratching the surface, really on both ends of the floor. And that's what you want to see, I would think, right, as a head coach, just do something in the summer to make yourself more multidimensional. Yes, without a doubt. And Tiana Todd spent her senior year at an IMG Academy in Florida. opportunities at the free throw line as Kennedy Todd Williams knocks down another three. But we talk about this all the time in this league. You know, if you're a team who's trying to trying to make up some ground, your margin for error is so slim. I think that officials sometimes aren't used to seeing the the, the back to the you know the back screen or the butt screen sometimes as you call it. Daily now with seven. The butt screen. The butt screen. Yep. It's a different angle. When, yep. you, when it looks different, sometimes you infer that it's it's not correct. Kelly. 
Just off the rim and another whistle. Joanna Burnaby McNamee in her fifth year, along with Jeff Walls, an assistant on Maryland's 2006 National Championship team. Nothing but net comes your way to break down everything on the women's side on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Shot clock is off. And let's see if Boston College can at least close the half. No, they can't. DC shooting just 29%. Do have 12 points, so they've broken the string of single digit scoring quarters at five in a row. Kelly, she's going to shoot. And North Carolina up 17 at the half. And again, North Carolina is playing without three starters in this game. Usby, Hodgson, and Poole all sidelined with injuries. No matter whether that play needs to be made offensively or defensively, she just elevates those around her because she's going to get it done. Another transition bucket. This is a team in, in Boston College that's shown that it's capable. They're really young. Again, they lost over 70% of their offense. They lost their experience. No seniors, no grad transfers. Very young and, and inconsistent. But they've got to find a way to, to put some strings some plays together to get some confidence. Yeah, something positive. There is a turnover. Mayor, good pursuit of the basketball. And they didn't take any shots to warm up for the second half. So a big message in the locker room we can assume. I would anticipate, and, and you know, Coach Mack talked to us about how disappointed she was and they were as Alaya hits a three in their effort and execution against Duke. And it hasn't been a whole lot better here today. So certainly challenging this team to, to respond and, and to try to find some sort of rhythm and attention to detail to the game plan. Answering with another three, Todd Williams buries it. She's into double digits, and the lead is ballooned to 21. North Carolina right there at number 14 for Coach Banghart. There you see Notre Dame, Virginia Tech also in there, and the NCAA committee takes into consideration injuries. Right now, North Carolina with three starters out, and Coach Banghart says that she has been assured she's going to get everybody back before the season is over. It looks like Usby's going to come back sooner than Eva Hodgson. I mean, Usby does so many things so well for this team. She is definitely the ultimate utility player who does so many things as Todd Williams gets out in transition with the and one. Good body control by Kennedy Todd Williams, someone who can get to the rim. Learning to find the balance of when to do what um, has been important, but again, a player whose ceiling is just so high. Eight to four. Shot clock dying, the three-point shot. Off the mark for Daly. North Carolina, even after doubling up, BC continues to push pace. Off balance shot, Paulina Paris, the freshman back in the game. And that was Steps, Steph White called it correctly. Nice cut into the lead lane and the floater for Todd. Back to back shots for the youngster from Ontario. Gets the lead to 20. So the last few possessions, BC's been able to get two feet in the paint and knock down some shots. And again, Coach Mack telling us she wants to get back to pushing in transition, but she got to get some stops. Florida State, Virginia Tech follow us. That Miami Duke game is huge. Syracuse, if they beat Notre Dame, Charlie says they move into the field. Absolutely. And Miami, a chance to improve their seating. You know, every game at this point in the year matters when you think about seeding for conference tournaments and opportunities for buys and double buys and seeding for the NCAA tournament. Oh, nice fade. And Timmerin, a bit of a funky shot for the lefty. That one was 
off the mark. And now another BC player is shaken up. Basket counts for Daly. Lazama, the freshman from Boston. Mouth. Pay attention to her nose. Let's take a look. Number 14 in pink. Can't really tell. She kind of got sandwiched kinda in there, right? smushed back there. Asia Kelly time. McPherson, short. Rebound bounced around and eventually taken in by Todd, one of two true freshmen who have been starting for Coach Mack. Strong foul. That, that sometimes is a tendency of a, of a young team. The, the transitioning from, from practice to the pressure, but, but she flat out said it, you know, we've been soft. We haven't been as, as, as tough. McPherson, another rim out, ball chased down by Shitenge. Now here's Mayer. Paris down there, Mayer had it taken away. Nope, a foul on Paris. You see it from this angle, oh yeah, she came across her arm. We were fortunate to get all of those angles in the replay. Diana Mayer is going to be a really good player in this league, but she also has a high turnover number as well, and that's just part of the learning curve for her, understanding how to take care of the ball, what kinds of decisions, and when to make them. And Kayla Ivey, who was the starting point guard, tore her ACL in the preseason. Wagner, their leading scorer and rebounder, also out with the injury. Very promising freshman point guard. And there's some of that promise, nailing the three. Deja Kelly. Over to Paris. North Carolina. BC tied them 17 all in scoring in that period, but Carolina still up large at home. Azama just picked up a foul for Boston College. Harris, shot clock, McPherson, nothing to it. Too high for Van Timmeren, and saved in nicely by Adams. Here's McPherson again in the open court. Harris for three, knocked it down. And happy birthday to Cash. Happy birthday, Cash. Yes. Your one-year-old rescue dog. One-year-old, yes. Making a cake for him. Oh, yes, I don't yes. know about making a cake. <laughs> North Carolina looking for its 18th game, 18th win of the year, pardon me, and would snap a two-game losing skid. McPherson going out of bounds. How long has it been? So this is her 20, you know, she missed the first 20 games of the year with an injury. Pam, she tweeted out that it was 808 days between the last time that she played and the first game that she played this season. 808 days. And that first game was January 29th against Clemson. She's got 22 points tonight. It takes a little while to get back, not into just game shape, but game rhythm. Timing, feeling comfortable on the floor, feeling comfortable with the ball in your hands and your movements again. And how quickly she's been able to get back to moving the way that she moves is really incredible. Just a disheartening couple of games for BC. But it's got to be tough to try to figure out how to right this ship after a couple of really Disappointing back-to-back -back games. Yeah, and particularly with a young team, you know how quickly you can you can change gears, and you know you think about after that deep game, you know do you just do you flush it? You know do you watch the film? Do you go over you know everything that you know that you didn't do offensively? In that game against Duke, they shot 18% from the floor, but Duke is a just a phenomenal defensive team but just 34% this afternoon against Carolina. Buckdang has been kept in check. 
shot from the outside. Bottom of the net for Lacey. Back to back three. She's got three of them on the day. One thing she likes about Mayer, right, is she loves to play defense. You don't see that a lot, period, much less in true freshmen. Yeah, she talked about her, her defensive energy, offensively, her high IQ, her toughness. Has the potential to be a really good point guard in this league for a long time. And interesting lineup for Carolina right now. I, I, I like it. They're going big. Kenny Todd Williams run, running the point guard. Got Destiny Adams playing on the perimeter. It does give Courtney Banghart an opportunity to, to play with, with different lineups. And Timmerin gets one to fall from the outside. And that's something that this big lead, right? You get that luxury where you can kind of play around with your lineups a little bit. And you certainly want to make sure that you're, you're trying to give players a blow when you can, because it does wear, when you, when you don't have the depth, you're, you've got players who are not used to playing a lot of minutes who are having to do that, and you've got to try to find ways to, to manage that as well. Deja Kelly. Missing key foul. Tiana Key, the sister of Tamari Key, sitting out the rest of the season because of blood clots. That's forced inside, but a whistle before the ball even got in there. Doc Deng was fouled. But Doc Deng, this is a very frustrating day for her. And again, you've got to give credit to, to Carolina, the interior defense, keeping her uncomfortable. You could tell it was a point of emphasis in the scout. North Carolina, big game coming up Thursday night at NC State. We will be there in Raleigh on the ACC Network on Thursday. Good follow for Key. Right now, Virginia is up 10 over NC State midway through the fourth quarter. Gosh, so much going on in the ACC this season. But Kelly does a great job of getting by the first defender, secondary defenders late. Gets that and one opportunity. Oh, can't convert it. But you know, Pam, we, we've got Ivory Latta back in the studio. And when I look at Kayla McPherson and I think about her energy, I think about her toughness, uh, I, I think about Ivory Latta and what Ivory Latta was for the te teams here that she played for at Carolina by Charlotte Smith to beat Louisiana Tech, predecessor of Coach Banghart. I was at that final four as well. Richmond. Saw that shot in Richmond, yes. I was there as well. This boy McPherson is, just can't wait to see her career continue to blossom. Ah, it was too late. It was there, but it was there about two seconds earlier. All about timing, right? It sure is. All right, so your Boston College team, Steph, as we hit a minute to go, you're coming off BC and this, you're going to Pitt, which is no longer a gimme game. How do you keep keep going down the stretch? Well, I think you really got to challenge your team's competitiveness. You know, talk, talk about what you continue to get better at, certainly, but that there have been flashes of being a really good ball club. And, and confidence and, and preparation and execution are all part of that. And right now you're playing for pride. You're playing to get back into to some sort of confident mindset. Getting Dontavia Wagner back certainly would help that. Yes, it would. You're absolutely right. And we probably haven't spoken enough about that here today and the impact that she makes on this team. Affecting both ends of the floor, their leading scorer, a rebounder, gets to the line a lot. Van Timmeren's had a good fourth quarter. And again, you just can't underestimate the confidence lift she gives everybody else around her. But Carolina has been dominant from start to finish. And this is the response and the bounce back you want if you're Courtney Banghart. So Kayla McPherson with the career day in points, field goals, rebounds, and threes. Six 
career new career highs for three different players on this team. They take it 73-55. Just a terrific effort. Execution on both ends.